Are we all cured? We got the fucking. We, we, we've got to do the fucking shit that we need for fucking uh, drug abuse. No, 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 Sean here on this trip from hell, and I wanted to make a video because Lauren just repeats all the time. And I wasn't sure it was still going on exactly the way it used to be, and of course he repeats because he doesn't think his behavior is wrong. And the end result, it's always the same, but it's not his fault, it's everyone else. That's why his, his behavior repeats. Why should he change it? He knows he's right. It would be like Lauren saying, well, my mathematical equation is 2 plus 3, and the answer is 4. Now, I know my math is sound, and I know what I'm doing is right. So, the person writing number 5, they're wrong. So, what am I getting at? He is doing the exact same crap with Jamie Amy, the robot, as he did with every other catfish woman. I want you to take the term associate counseling and permanently stick it in your vocabulary or in your mind palace. Because you're going to have it happen to you quite a bit and you're not going to be able to describe it. Well, now you can. This particular call, I was listening to Cornbow three-way stream with Evil Little McNuggets. I, I just love the whole community. And then I went to TCAP Gaming because I always got to stop at it. That's like, uh, that's like when you walk in and TCAP get there like, Norm! You know, like on Cheers, if you're young, you don't know what that is. It's People will come into the bar and, yay! You know, they'd welcome them like they were family. This particular call, Lauren had hung up on Jamie Amy or she hung up on him. It doesn't matter. Where I picked up was when he called her back and he basically did what I said with associate counseling. He said, basically the, you know, I had a long talk with Winnie this morning, see what I'm doing. Well, he said, I called my counselor, couldn't get a hold of the female because we know she's the one who coddles him. And I guarantee you, guarantee you, that she did not answer that phone on purpose because she didn't want to deal with him. Lauren thinks they're on tap. They need. Think about it. His counselors are the same as these catfish women. And I wonder, I really do, if he doesn't text message them and call them and leave them voicemail messages like, I thought you were supposed to help me. You're not helping me. Why won't you answer the phone? I can't imagine the woman, not the man, but the woman, because I think he would be polite with the man. I think he would be a little more understanding with the man. But with the female, I think he would be clingy and needy, and I think he would be aggressive. So I think that's why she might not answer the phone. He couldn't get a, get a hold of her, so he gets a hold of Sean. And for the record, I am not Sean the counselor. There have been people who have asked me. I would like to be the counselor. I would love to talk to this idiot. I think I could get through to him. You have to be a friend to Lauren. And that's a danger because when you become friendly with Lauren, manipulators, they try to use that to their advantage. But when you are smart to it and you know all of the aspects of a manipulator, these probation and parole officers, they're exhausted. They're tired. They have a whole bunch of Laurens they have to manage. And I wouldn't want to do that. Therapists, counselors, you couldn't pay me to do it. I can't imagine other than just needing a job why you would take that position. Knowing what, well, you probably didn't know what you have to deal with. But let's get back to what I was talking about. So Lauren calls back to Jamie Amy, and the associate counseling kicks in. And this is where he says, couldn't get a hold of Sean, or couldn't get a hold of so-and-so, got a hold of Sean, had a long talk with him, he kind of helped me through it. And Lauren, like a fucking idiot, thinks that it's going to change immediately. Like talking to the counselor for... 20 minutes, 15 minutes, it's going to help him. And I agreed with Cornville Three-Way that the counselor was just like, yeah, whatever. See you later. Welcome to the United States of whatever. You know, get out, Lauren. Just told him whatever he wanted to hear. He, if <sighs> The way it works is when you don't want to talk to somebody, you find out what it is that they want. And then you just give them the answers that will make them go get what they want. Even if they shouldn't do it. I try to stop giving advice. I really do. There was a guy by the name of Chris Butler. He worked in Oregon. And they were giving... I worked at Intel. 
they were giving like severance packages and there was another company that also made chips and you could go over to them and they would hire you well of course he asked my opinion and I said do you need the money he said yes anyway long story short he ended up having to come back and pawn his drums because he blew through all the money and he ended up getting a job there but he was on a waiting list because he didn't get on there when he was supposed to but I felt bad for that for a long time somebody like Lauren you know I'd be afraid that I would feel kind of bad especially if I just told him but you know what it's Lauren and they're probably tired of it so we long story short he calls back Jamie Amy and he gives her that line about talk to him see what I'm doing basically saying I already fixed it we don't need to talk about it here are the answers we came to now can we please move on all of the stuff that came before the year everything that came before didn't matter none of that matters anymore I just had a 20 minute conversation that wiped out everything and all of a sudden you have my permission to do the profession that you've been in long before I got here you have my permission now and I'm okay with it and I'm gonna have to let you choose it is my benevolence that is going to allow you to continue to be the anal gangbang queen and come home to me every night and then he starts talking about his fucking mom and his aunt if I'm a grown adult I'm not worrying about what my mom would like Lauren technically the trailer is his mom's basement it's just not at her house he still lives in his mom's basement just not on location at least that's my opinion so he's worried about what Aunt Sharon, Aunt Sharon, it's Aunt Lauren, you're a redneck. His Aunt Sharon and his mom are going to care. I wouldn't give a shit if I was, quote, in love with somebody. Like Lauren says he's in love with someone he's never met. It's only got a robot voice. I wouldn't be worried about what my parents think. The woman I married... She was separated. My mom didn't like her. I didn't give a fuck because I did. And her sisters hated my guts. But she didn't care because she liked me. It wasn't about them. So that's another red flag. But Lauren goes into the associate counseling immediately. And now, if you haven't heard this call, it's on Cornwall Three Ways channel, which... He keeps telling me I'm going to be on one of his streams, but he makes absolutely zero effort other than to call me out in the stream to do it. So I'm giving him shit. And again, his name is Sway. So it's Slash and Sway between Winnie's boyfriend slash husband and him. But the associate counseling thing, and obviously the robot, because we don't know who's behind the keyboard. The robot immediately calls him out on it, which I was kind of shocked because they let it go in the past. And the robot is questioning him about, so everything's okay because you talked to your counselor and your therapist. Lauren, if every time something bothers you, you're going to rage to the point that you need to speak to a therapist or a counselor, my guy, we are not going to last And I don't think he understands that you shouldn't need to talk to somebody all the time. If you've ever seen the movie Joker, one of my favorite of all time, he goes to a therapist. And you can tell she is dealing with lots of Lauren Armstrong. She's just worn out. So again, Joker, he goes there and he sees her out of necessity because there is something broken inside of him. There's nothing broken in Lauren. He is just a deviant, he's a pedophile, he's an alcoholic, even if there's not any alcohol in his system, because the moment he gets the chance, he's going to start drinking. And that's an alcoholic, just like when he started smoking. He's the guy, again, who I'll I'll quit smoking when you get here. As soon as you get here, I'll stop. And then I I agreed with Cornwall Three-Way, I think I said that in my video, like when I first started this, that it would just progress to the point where he was smoking inside, much like my dad did, smoke outside, smoke at the edge and blow it out the window, and then just fuck it, I'll smoke downstairs, 
and then just fuck it, I'll smoke upstairs in the living room. Because he has no respect for anyone or himself. And I don't understand how you can live a life where you need somebody else at all times to tell you how to feel, to tell you what's right. And this is the problem. He knows the difference between right and wrong. He knows what he should do and what he shouldn't. So he calls these therapists because he needs to hear it from somebody else. Like, you know, I had to hear it from my mom. I had to hear it from, you know, Emma and my mom or whoever else. With Debbie, you know, Winnie had a long talk. So even now, even from the Ramona calls to the robot calls, he's still going to other people and talking to them. And why is he doing that? I think I left this out of the other video, and this is really important. He's talking to them because he can't talk to the person he needs to talk to. Because he can't manipulate them. And the other people, they just want to get Lauren off the phone, so they're going to say, okay, you're right, this is how you should feel. So now, instead of having that difficult conversation with whoever it is he's causing problems with, he's having it with somebody else, because they're just going to go along with it. And I don't understand how you think you could come home, being out all night drinking, and coming home and your wife yelling at you, and doing what Lauren does and saying, I'm just really glad this happened, I kind of need a wake-up call. That's the worst manipulation tactic you can have. And I swear to you, there have been times where I needed a smack in the face, and I got it. And I was like, okay, let me learn from this, let me move on. I don't like the feeling of that smack, I'm, you know, it's a metaphorical smack. I don't like the feeling, I don't like the fact that I made that mistake, I don't want to make that mistake again. Here's what happened, here's why I did it, here's what went wrong, and, and let's move on. Lorne is the guy Seamus from Harry Potter. The guy who keeps blowing himself up trying stupid shit. Well, that's Lorne, he's gonna continue to blow, it's gonna blow up in his face. Because, if you continue to let things progress to the point where you're needing that smack, eventually the smack's gonna be too hard, you're gonna get knocked out. And guess what, Lauren? Your smack happened in Nashville. Your smack happened there. And then you got smacked again. You started getting out of control. You had every chance in the world to correct your behavior. You started getting out of control. And then you went back to prison, my friend, because you were breaking the terms of your probation. The same way you are in relationships is the same way you are in life. I'm going to do what I want to do, and I don't need anybody's permission to do it. I'm Lauren freaking Armstrong. I'm a badass. Wait a minute, what do you mean I'm in trouble? I've been doing this my whole life. And that's another thing. Lauren knows what's right and what's wrong. But if he's been allowed to do it for any length of time, he's going to assume it's acceptable. So his behavior with all these catfish women, and they've let him play along. That's one thing I don't like about the catfish women is they've not encouraged it, but enabled him to do the things that he should not be doing. I'm not talking about drinking. I'm just talking about his rage. They would try to teach him at certain points, but he can't learn. He's too dumb. So that's why he does this associate counseling shit, associate counseling shit, and that's why he's still doing the same thing he did before with Jamie Amy. I don't, I can't process how you get there and how that could be any kind of existence at all. To be alive is one thing, but to be alive with no purpose, no guidance, no love, no happiness, simply to exist. He's a binary thinker, so there's only alive and dead. We talked about that in my other video. He's only, there's only life and death. There is no in-between, which I wonder sometimes is why he can't figure out what happiness is, where that place is that he needs to be. Repeatable behavior, enabled repeatable behavior, is something he's going to be dealing with for the rest of his life. And although I wish it could be fixed, unless he gets another hard smack, he's going to be the same idiot who gets catfished over and over again. And he's going to try this shit. I bet he told the judge. I can hear him telling the judge or his counselor. Well, you know, after you talk to me, had a long talk with my mom. See what I'm doing. 
I would imagine he tries it with them, but when you're dealing with the law, you know, that doesn't work. But I, I would assume that Lauren is trying it because he hasn't changed a bit. Not one bit. Why so serious? So the bottom line is, Lauren needs those big smacks in the face. He hasn't changed. I'm not sure if he'll ever change, but I do know he will remain the same asshole underneath that he has always been. And as long as he keeps getting catfished, I'll keep listening. Hell, at this point, we could have a radio station, WLRN, you know, all Lorne, all the time. That's my video. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Huh? Huh? <laughs>